Well, here we are, the end of practice on day one for stop number four of the FLW Tour on Lake Cumberland, presented by TH Marine. I have BFL All-American champion, Jeremy Lawyer here. And um, I wanted to talk to you because you're from Missouri, you're an Ozark guy, and looking over this lake behind my shoulder, it looks kind of Ozarky. So tell me about it. It is. It, it's similar and everything, but it, it's not quite under the water. It's not quite the same. Uh, it does have some transitions and different things, but uh, you know, I really wanted to try and fish some gravel today and some flat stuff and some uh, some long roll offs and things mm -hmm. like that. Then fish can get on, and uh, it's pretty hard to find some of that stuff. <laughs> you know, you can get up next to the bank and parallel all you want because there's not uh, there's not much out there. You know, it's pretty sure. spotty after that. But uh, watercolor and all that, it is real similar to. to back in the Ozarks. Have you ever been to Cumberland before? No, uh -uh, no. It is kind of a long way from home. It is. It wasn't bad, like 10 hours. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's got some it's got some fish in it. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think today was just one of them days that uh, they were moving some, and the, and the weather's kind of changing, and mm -hmm. it's almost like they wanted to be up there just getting warm. And I saw a couple cruising this afternoon, and it was a, it was a pretty long day, really, you know, bite wise. But uh, uh, I don't think a guy probably better go off that. It's going to get better, I'd say, as the day goes on or the week goes on. Okay. Well, yeah, break it down for me because coming into this tournament, we were talking a lot about uh, you know probably being a pre-spawn bite. Um, so where are we at water temperature wise right now? The water temperature is anywhere from 57 to you know, 62 or three this afternoon, and a couple of places even got 65. So, oh, wow. uh, you know, you're in the very back. I think I outran the fish back there. But, uh, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of that, uh, you know, fact the fish are moving up. There probably be, if there wasn't going to be a front coming in Thursday and Friday and everything that really gets cold, you know, down in the 30s and highs in the 40s, then you'd probably see some spawning fish. And I just don't know if there'll be enough to lock on and actually sure. be, be spawning by the time the tournament starts. But there'll definitely be some up there running around. Okay. Um, there's also, Cumberland has, uh, you know, it's got large mouse, it's got some really big small mouse, and it's got some spotted bass. Uh, do you have a game plan as to like a species you want to attack, or are you just going to kind of whatever bites on your hook? on the pattern you get dialed in. Well, after today, it's whatever's going to bite. I'll take five, whatever they are, as long as they're long enough. You know, I caught two nice smallmouth today. They weren't keepers, but they probably weighed over three pounds each. Oh, wow. You know, but I did measure them both, and they were 17-something, both of them, so they wouldn't even kept. But uh, everything you do catch is fat, but, uh, you know, I just got about a bite an hour today as far as what I caught. And uh, everything I caught was fat and healthy. There just wasn't, uh, you know, a lot of numbers. Right now, we're on the, the lower portion of the lake. Um, uh, do you have any plans to look up towards takeoff? Yeah, definitely tomorrow I'll go up there, you know. Uh, it's the water's probably a lot dirtier up there, you know, and that and that may even play better in everybody's hands, you know, depending on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, no more than I saw today for sure. A guy can't live and die down here, you know, off that. And I'm not going to say by the end of the week it's not one down here, you know, you never know. And we get some rain and weather, and you know, at home when we get some weather, uh, the clear end a lot of times is the place to be. Sure. And, and so, uh, you know, we'll go, go there tomorrow, and, and uh, I'll probably put in up the other end and then decide what happens on day three of practice. Well, uh, you got a couple more days to figure it out. We'll see if you can't uh, maybe feel like home out here on Cumberland. Yeah, right. That'd be all right. Get some wind <laughs> blowing and, and be able to catch them up shallow. Well, I'll let you get rolling, Jeremy. Thanks for joining yep. me, man. Thank you. All right, we're keeping things rolling here. And uh, Brian Thrift joining us today uh, after you've made not one, not two, but three top tens in a <laughs> row on the tour, uh, not to mention your coast of top ten. Uh, on Seminole. So, I mean, I'd say it's pretty good 2017 <laughs> for you so far. Yeah, it's, it's started out great. You know, I've got no complaints and making money. That's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I'm not going to lie to the folks watching this. Before we started recording, uh, you said that was about to come to a screeching halt, <laughs> which we have a great bet between you and Jody White behind the camera uh, that you will make a top 10 here. Um, <laughs> but tell me why James Watson making an appearance as well. Uh, tell me why lakes like Cumberland you just don't really jive with. Why don't you really like it? I, everything looks the same to me. Like I'm, Fair point. I probably drove 20 miles a day without stopping the boat, just mm -hmm. looking for something that, hey, this is different or this looks good, pull over here and let's fish this. And to me, it just all looks the same. It sure. just blends together. It's just various different shades of colored rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a good point. That's a great way to describe it. Um, have you been on Cumberland before? No, this is the first time I've been here. Do you like lakes that you've never been to? You like just showing up to them? Oh yeah, I love coming to places I've never been before. And I'm, I'm not gonna say I don't like Cumberland yet. I mean, I caught a few fish today, but it's- Right, it, it's just more of these styles of yeah, lakes. Yeah, this, this type of lake, I just, 
I don't know, I just can't seem to figure it out. It's hard for me to put the trolling motor down and go for miles and just fish and fish and hope I get a bite. And I feel like that's what you gotta do here. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, and, and the other thing too, like on, the, on this lower end where we're at right now, you can really fish. Uh, I mean, there's small mouse, a lot of small mouse down here. Yeah. Uh, large mouse sp spotted bass. There's a lot of variety too. Um, but I think this end will probably get a lot of pressure. So for you breaking it down, and you're running around, how does someone with your mindset try to find something a little different? I mean, is it just like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I knew at this point. Right now, I, like I said, I haven't been able to find anything that I feel like was different or stood out in my mind that, that kind of drew me toward it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the, the lake seems to have a fair number of fish. I mean, I didn't get a lot of bites today, but I caught spots, small mouth and large mouth today. And I sampled a little bit of everything and had just never really got dialed in on anything yet. Okay. So. From what you've seen, majority of the fish are pre-spawn? Yeah, I'm gonna say 99% okay. of them. Okay, a very <laughs> large portion, okay. Yes, pretty much all of them. <laughs> John Cox or someone like that might find a couple on beds, but otherwise <clears throat> it'll be a pre-spawn deal, especially with the weather that we're forecasting I, in the I week. I think so, unless they move up tonight or tomorrow, I, I think it's gonna be a pre-spawn deal. All right, uh, one of the final things I wanna leave you with is you won a tour event on Beaver back in like 2011 or 12, something like that, early March or mid-March, end of March, somewhere in there. It was cold. Yeah. Uh, what was it like then? Because I, the point I want to get at is, you know, talking about running around just fishing the bank. Uh, yeah. You threw a jerk bait in that one. Yeah. I mean, is there any kind of correlation to what went on there and maybe something you could tie into here on Cumberland? Um, not really, because those, fi those fish were pretty much on a dead winter pattern. Okay. And they normally don't move. So if you find fish in practice in the winter time, they're usually, they're gonna you be You don't gotta there. worry about them leaving right. and going back of pocket right. or something like that? And this time of year, I mean, we've got 75 degrees days and then 50 degree days. I mean, I feel like the fish are coming, going, stopping in between. I don't, right. I don't know if they know it's where to, to keep, be. It's hard to keep yeah. a pulse on them. Right, exactly. Well, uh, lucky for you, uh, <laughs> you're really good, but also you have two more days of practice. So yes. with that, I'm gonna let you get out of here. This place <laughs> is starting to turn into a zoo and good luck to you, Brian. Thank you, I appreciate it, guys. All right, wrapping things up here, day one of practice. Got a finesse specialist, Cody Meyer. Also a guy that can catch really big fish at will. And basically like a pond in your backyard at home. Yeah, yeah, well, but you got to re remember, they eat a hot dog there. You can literally True. throw a wacky rig hot dog and catch them. So <laughs> I feel like that? a rock star. No, but I should though. You should, you should make a video about <laughs> but that. But when you have a bad tournament, you go home, you catch them, you feel good again, you feel like you can catch them, then you come back out here and you're back down to where you, be, <laughs> where you began before. <laughs> well, uh, Cumberland, you know, it's new for a lot of guys on tour. You've been fishing the tour for a while. Have you ever set foot on Cumberland. No, no, this is my eighth year on tour. Never been here. This is a beautiful, beautiful place. This is a humongous place as well. It is big. I launched here in Beaver Creek. I ran, it seemed like a long ways, and I looked on the map, and it's just a fraction. <laughs> uh, so I saw very little of the lake, which is discouraging because there's right. so much to look at and, uh, you know, have a lot of work to still do, really. Well, uh, the word on the street from talking to guys here, you know, a lot of fish are pre-spawn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like, you know, you might be able to find some stuff that uh, maybe got some groups of fish sitting on, staging to go spawn. You find anything cool like that today? You know, I found a lot of fish. The problem is getting keepers. I went after smallmouth today. Mm. I they caught, gotta be 18 inches. Yes, I caught a ton of 16 inches, 17, 17 and a half, 17 three quarters one 18 incher wow so you're throwing back 15 16 pounds and they're not keepers Oof. uh which is really discouraging because i i want to do that i feel mm -hmm. like if you get five you're gonna have a really good bag but the problem is is getting five i mean literally i fished from them light to dark and got one 18 inch smallmouth. so really tough you know and i caught some spotted bass mixed in but they're just small tomorrow i'm gonna kind of do the same thing look for you know some large mouth they're definitely pre-spawning those fish are so fat some of those 17 inchers are so big I mean, if you just smash them down, they'd go 18. But their belly <laughs> is not letting them go 18. Right. <laughs> but uh, I mean, an 18 incher here is a big fish, but mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know. I mean, every every 17 incher you catch, you're like, oh my gosh, this place is awesome. They don't keep. So <laughs> you could you could have an amazing day and uh, come in with one fish. I mean, that easy here. Now, <laughs> I have I know nothing of Cumberland other than what I've read and talked to people about. Um, to you, does it seem like a pattern fishery? 
It does, yeah. Um, it, it really does. I mean, you could kind of take one thing, run, you know, creeks, main lake, whatever you're doing, and really you can pattern it. Like, like I said, the problem is just it's not catching fish; it's just getting the keepers. Sure. And you know, the guy that figures out how to catch five, eight, ten inch smallmouth or those largemouth or whatever, I, whether it be luck, you just run into them or whatever. I mean. You know, obviously you're going to do it really well, but I think it's going to be hard to do one day, let alone two days for sure. Uh, I want to ask you a question uh, because you've been on tour for a while, you've seen a lot of things. Uh, weather this week, uh, we're going to we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. Early in the tournament, I think we're supposed to get some rain. I know this lake can fluctuate yeah. uh, a good amount, you know, with a with a decent rain overnight. Uh, plus, it's supposed to be warm next few days. Not yeah. not over the top hot, but yeah. warm, and then get kind of cool at the tournament. Do you think that warm weather will be enough to maybe move some fish up on bed? Uh, I, th I think there's there's some on beds right now, for sure. Okay. Uh, the water this morning was like 56, in the afternoon 61. Ooh. So smallmouth for sure, there's some bedding. Uh, fluctuating water could be a challenge. You mm -hmm. know, I've seen California lakes where they come up 10 feet in a day. Yeah. Uh, here, I heard this place is, you know, not 10 feet, but it can come up a lot you know right. overnight because it's pretty and this steep. time of year that can be a big deal it can be a big deal i don't know how how it affect these fish just because my first day out here sure. but uh it's probably not gonna help i would have to imagine <laughs> unless you're running creeks or some kind of running water or those pre-spawn fish might get up in that stuff and you might mm -hmm. catch them better but bedding fish should definitely hurt them well uh you got two more days of practice uh you said you got a lot more water to look for uh are you gonna try to go up the lake at all to where the, it gets a little dirtier up there. Yeah, yeah, I definitely am. Uh, I'd rather not, I'd rather fish down here, but it's so hard to catch keepers that maybe go up there and catch you know a lot of largemouth sure, or something Sure, sacrifice like numbers just for some better yeah, average. Yeah, because right now, like I said, I would have had you know, that one small is three and a half and then you know, a couple pound and a half spots. I mean, doesn't really add up where maybe you go up there and you can you can catch a bunch of you know, two and a half pounders or something. So I'm definitely gonna look, you know, we can we can pray right and hope that it's oh, going to yeah. be better but who knows man but like I say it's the first day beautiful place like it here i uh, just wish we had an exemption bill taylor for uh, like a 15 inch smallmouth right bring it down just <laughs> yeah, a little bit yeah man make it fun <laughs> maybe next time yeah who knows <laughs> well with that man i'll let you get rolling um i'm hungry you're hungry yep let's go eat thanks man